Welcome to our lecture online. And now for the third case, the final of the three cases, we're going to deal with an, oh, I didn't write it down yet. How about underdamped? The underdamped example. So in this case, we need a larger resistor. We went from 5 ohms to 6.25 ohms. We knew from the previous example that the 5 ohm resistor gave us a critically damped situation. So that means that if we then increase the resistance, we now will have an underdamped case. So the equation that we're going to use for the underdamped case is right here. So let's write that down. So we can say that the voltage as a function of time is equal to, we have A1 times the cosine of omega sub dt, that means the frequency of oscillation for the damped case, uh, plus a sub 2 times the sine of omega sub d times t, and multiply that times e to the minus alpha t. All right, so let's first find alpha, and then right away we should also be able to find omega, which means we should be able to verify that we're dealing with an underdamped example. So alpha is equal to 1 over 2rc, which is equal to 1 over 2 times 6.25, I think that's what it was, yes, times 0 0.01. And let's see what that's equal to. Uh, looks like about 8. So 2 times 6.25 times 0 0.01. Take the inverse. Sure enough, that's equal to 8. And omega sub naught, that should not have changed from the previous example. That's 1 over the square root of LC, which is 1 over the square root of 1 times 0 0.01, which is equal to 10. And sure enough, you can see that alpha is smaller than omega sub naught, which means that becomes a negative, and therefore we're dealing with an underdamped example, case number 3 here. All right. So that means we can replace alpha by what alpha is equal to. And how about omega sub d? Omega sub d is equal to the square root of omega sub naught squared minus alpha squared, because now omega is bigger than alpha. So this is equal to the square root of 10 squared minus 8 squared, which is the square root of 100 minus 64, which is 36, which is equal to 6. So now we can plug that into our equation where the voltage as a function of time is equal to a sub 1 times the cosine of 6t plus a sub 2 times the sine of 6t all multiplied times e to the minus alpha, which is 8 times t. And now we're still left with finding a1 and a2. So starting with the initial condition that the voltage is 5 volts when t is equal to 0, we can plug that in here. So voltage when t is equal to 0 is equal to 5, which is equal to a times the cosine of 0, plus that's a1, plus a2 times the sine of 0, times e to the 0. Now of course, sine of 0 is, that is equal to 0, cosine of 0 is equal to 1, which means that this is also equal to 1, which means that 5 is equal to a1. So very quickly, we have found the value for a1. But now we need to find the value for a2. And to do that, we need to find the derivative of the voltage. So the dvdt is equal to, we have a product here. So we take the first, which is a1 times the cosine of, well, I might as well follow this one here of 6t plus a2 times the sine of 6t, that's the first, times the derivative of the second, which is minus 8 times e to the minus 8t, plus the second, which is e to the minus 8t, times the derivative of the first. So now take the derivative of this. So the derivative of cosine is a negative sine times 6, so I end up with minus 6a1 times the sine of 6t, and the derivative of sine is a cosine, so I end up with plus 6a2 times the cosine of 6t. And then, of course, I need some room here. I need to, f I need to calculate the dv dt, the dv, when v is 0 of dt is equal to the negative of, uh, that would be v sub naught plus I sub naught R over RC, which is equal to the negative of 
V sub naught, which is 5, minus 0, because the initial current is 0, divided by R, which is 6.25, times 0.01. All right. 5 divided by 6.25 divided by 0 0.01 equals, that's 80. So this is equal to minus 80. All right. That we can now plug in here. So we can say that the dV, when the voltage is, or the time is zero of dt, so dV dt when time is equal to zero, is equal to minus 80, is equal to, now we have to plug in zero for all the t's. When plug in a zero here, we get cosine of zero, which is one, so we end up with a1. When we plug in a zero there, we get zero, because the sine of zero is zero, times a negative eight, times e to the zero, plus, e to the 0 times, that's 0, this will be 6a2 times 1. All right, cleaning it up just a little bit, see what we get. a1 was 5, so we get minus 80 equals minus 40 plus 6a2. Bringing that across, I get minus 40 equals 6A2. And let's see, 40 divided by 6 equals, so that gives us A2 is equal to a negative 6.667. All right, so we have A1, we have A2, and now we simply have to plug it into our equation. The equation would be this one right here. All right, so all we have to do is plug it in and see what we get. So. Voltage as a function of time is equal to A1, which is 5, times the cosine of 6t, A2, which is a negative 6.667, negative 6.667, times the sine of 6t, all multiply times e to the minus 8t. And here's the equation that gives us the voltage as a function, function of time of this circuit, now that we have an underdamped case, when the resistance is equal to 6.25 ohms, we can calculate the voltage across any one of the components, which is now equal to this equation right here. Now notice we're going to have an oscillation for a while because of this portion right here, but eventually this will end up causing the voltage to go to zero as t becomes large. And that is how we figure out the voltage equation for an underdamped example in that is how it's done. All right, we're good for today? All right, let's call it a day. Oh, let's see if it's correct. <coughs> yes, it is correct. <laughs> All right.